Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work because I have an interesting little math word problem here for you. Matter of fact, let me read the problem. It is the following. Two gears have a gear ratio of 8 to 1. The little gear turns at 288 RPMs. What is the RPMs of the big gear? Now, some of you may be a little bit lost here in terms of the nomenclature. RPM stands for uh, revolutions per minute. Now, hopefully you know what a gear is. A gear are uh, basically uh, mechanical pieces that are found in like transmissions or clocks or watches. Basically, there's one little gear like so, and it has little things on it, okay, gear teeth, and it turns another uh, gear per se. So this is uh, basically what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about two gears, a small gear and a big gear. And revolutions per minute is how fast uh, a gear turns, right, in one minute. So this particular gear is turning 288 uh, turns or revolutions in one minute. All right, so I don't want to give you too many more hints other than that. I just want to make sure you understand the problem. But uh, I want to uh, kind of see you show off your math skills. And the key to solving this problem is basic mathematics. Matter of fact, I am going to give you a little bit of a hint. You need to focus in on this word right here. All right, so if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, uh, we are going to solve this problem step by step. This is not a difficult problem. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, if you just enjoy the content, uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I did say that the key here is this word, okay, ratio, the key to, uh, to the solution. And this is uh, basically a type of problem that everybody should be able to do. This is kind of practical math, basic math stuff. So if you're confused, you, I promise you, you will not be confused for much longer. Let's go to take a look at the answer. So the question is, uh, what is the RPMs of the big gear? Well, if you did this right, uh, you would have got the answer, 36 RPMs. All right, so if you got this right, we must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of ratios, okay? And this is really what we're talking about here, ratios and proportions, okay? ratios and proportions, because anytime you're dealing with a ratios, okay, or a rate, and you're given some sort of measurement, you need to think about this other word called a uh, proportion, okay, because this is how you solve ratio problems, and these are some of the most common problems in mathematics. All right, but if you didn't get this right, don't despair. In a few minutes, you'll be looking like this person. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we need to do is obviously read the problem and understand what's going on. Now, I did kind of explain uh, what gear, uh, two gears may look like and what RPM stand for because this could be confusing just in case you never heard of, uh, you know, know what a gear is. Um, but um, anyways, let's suppose you didn't know what a gear is and you understand RPMs. Well, nevertheless, you still want to read a problem at least three times. Never just read a problem and be like, okay, I understand what I'm doing, uh, and just start doing stuff. Uh, so always have that built-in discipline to read a problem, be like, okay, I understand it, read it again, think about it, and then really make sure you understand the problem. So here we have these two gears, right? The little gear is turning at 288 RPMs. We want to know how fast that big gear is turning, all right? So what we want to do is model the problem. That's always uh, your best uh, kind of uh, first initial strategy when you're solving a math word problem is try to model it. And this is where you can be very creative. One person's model may look uh, different than another's, but here, I mean, we're dealing with two gears. It's probably pretty obvious that we want to draw a little picture of two gears. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you my picture. 
Okay, so here is my two gears. Okay, we have a small gear and we have a big gear. So let's make uh, this very clear what a, a gear ratio is. Okay, a gear ratio. Now, this term can be a little bit confusing, but uh, let me go ahead and explain it right now. So if we have a small gear and a big gear, let's just think about it, right? Doesn't this gear right here have to you know, work pretty fast? This thing's gonna have to spin a lot to get this thing to go around one time, okay? Well, a gear ratio is basically telling you how many times the little gear has to turn to make the big gear turn one time, okay? That is effectively what a gear ratio uh, is. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are more mechanically inclined or know more about gear ratios, because you may work with uh, gear ratios, you know, with uh, transmissions, you know, if you're into automotive type of stuff, uh, to calculate gear ratios, there's a whole thing to it. You have to count the number of teeth, et cetera, et cetera. But effectively, uh, when you have the gear ratio, it means that, hey, the small gear, in this case, uh, if it's uh, an eight to one gear ratio, we have to turn this small gear eight times to get this big gear to turn one time. Okay, so that is what a gear ratio is. Now, when we think about this, right, we have to go back to our problem and we're saying, okay, what information do we have? Well, we know that the little gear turns at 288 RPMs, okay? So in that one minute, that little gear turned 288 times. How many times did it uh, turn that big gear? All right, so once you understand uh, a ratio, and by the way, let me just make something uh, clear here. The ratio, okay, is given to us as eight to one, eight to one. Now, there's a couple different ways you can express 8 to 1 or ratios uh, in mathematics. So you can write 8 to 1 just like this, or you can write it 8 and then you can put a colon like this, 8 to 1. This is a very common mathematical notation. And 8 to 1 uh, can also be written like this, 8 over 1. Okay. If I had the gear ratio, you could express it this way as well, 1 to 8. You would write this as uh, 1 to 8 or this would be the fraction one to eight, okay? All right, so this is what a gear ratio means, and here is effectively our problem, right? So instead of eight turns, this thing right here is turning 288 times. We wanna know how many times did the big uh, uh, gear turn uh, if the small gear turned 288 uh, times, right? That's the revolutions per minute, in one minute. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, what we wanna do is actually kind of set up a ratio. Now, you could do a one to eight or eight to one ratio. It doesn't make a big difference here. Um, so I'm gonna use one to eight. Okay, I think it's a little bit more, uh, easier to see as a fraction versus eight to one, but really it doesn't make a difference. It only is gonna make a difference when we set up our proportion and you'll see uh, this in one second. Okay, so basically what we wanna do is compare the small gear and the big gear. Now I can do that as the small gear to the big gear or the big gear to the small gear. So a ratio is a fraction. We're comparing um, uh, two numbers with the same units of measure. Okay, this is a really important uh, point here. So what are we comparing? Well, we're comparing RPMs, right? Revolutions per minute. In other words, how fast something turns. Now, a ratio, again, the units of measure that we're comparing are the same. Okay, in this case, it's RPMs. Now, a rate, which is another word you will hear, is completely different. So the rate, uh, let's do a quick example here, it might be something like miles per hour. That's the rate of a vehicle, for example. Now, a rate compares two different, completely different units of measure. So miles per hour, so we're comparing miles over one hour, okay, miles per hour. So miles is distance and hours is, a, uh, hours is time, okay? So completely two different, uh, different uh, units of measure, that is a rate. And when you're dealing with rates, you'll often hear the word per, like miles per hour or gallons per minute, meters per second, et cetera. When you're dealing with ratios, you'll hear that word too, teacher to student ratio, gear ratio, one to eight, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but either way, if you hear the word ratio or rate, you need to be thinking of another word 
and that is a proportion, okay, proportion, uh, because you can't really uh, solve a rate or ratio uh, problems unless you set up a proportion. Of course, I'm going to uh, set one up here uh, in a, just a quick second, but uh, anyways, we want to have this comparison, so I'm going to do big gear to small gear. This small gear down here, uh, eight, one to eight means what? Well, this thing is going to have to turn eight times to get this thing to turn one time, all right? So we have to be clear where, uh, which we're talking one, two, eight. What does the eight represent and what does the one represent? So the one is the big gear, okay? And eight is the small gear. All right, so with that, uh, you know, kind of uh, understanding in terms of what a ratio is, and I did bring up a rate because, uh, you know, again, uh, if you're studying this in mathematics, you will basically study uh, math uh, units or chapters, and the typical chapter name is uh, rates, ratios, and proportions. So I wanted to bring that in just to make sure you never confuse the two. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and set up a proportion. Okay, so what is a proportion? A proportion is two equal fractions, two equal fractions. Now here is the proportion that we need to set up to solve this problem. But let me just kind of make this clear here. A, uh, if I have a fraction like one half and I set it equal to another uh, fraction that's equal uh, in value to one half, like three over six, then I have a proportion. Okay, this is a proportion. Uh, it's as simple as that, two equal fractions. But the uh, awesome thing about proportions is there is a property of, of proportions called the cross product. In other words, if we multiply crosswise, two times three is what? Six, and one times six is, of course, six, so six is equal to six. So this cross product is always true when you have a valid proportion. So when we set up a proportion, we can use the cross product to solve that proportion, right? So again, a proportion is two equal fractions. Now, uh, what is a ratio and what is a rate? Well, those are fractions with particular units of measure, right? So we can also define a proportion as two equal rate, uh, rates or ratios. Okay, so now, finally, let's go ahead and set this proportion up. So here is our given information. We have our gear ratio one to eight. Uh, the eight is a small, right, for the small gear. That's the number of turns that small gear needs to go to get this big gear to turn one time. So our uh, big gear uh, revolutions is going to be in the numerator, our small gear down here, and the denominator. Now, the problem states that the little gear, let's go back and just reference it real quick. It says the little gear turns at 288 RPMs. So what is the RPMs of the big gear? So the information that we have is the little gear's RPMs, the small gear, right? So let's go down here and make sure that we don't uh, put that information in the wrong place in this fraction, okay? Now the thing about proportions is that your numerator and denominator values need to be the same, the same units. So down here, now this eight is the small gear RPM. And so over here we have uh, the small gear RPM, but it's 288, right? So we have to put this in the denominator. So we're looking for how many times the big gear turns if that small gear turns 288 times. All right, so this is the setup and this is our unknown value right here, uh, uh, X, which represents the number of times the big gear will turn if that small gear turns 288 times. So now what we need to do is solve this proportion. Of course, I just told you how to solve it, and uh, it just takes some really basic algebra here to solve for X. So if you were confused up to this point, maybe you wanna go ahead and see if you can actually solve this basic proportion because I'm going to do this right now. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Now, I wouldn't ask you if it did, if really, uh, you know, I wouldn't interrupt our nice little math lesson here if it wasn't that important. It's important to me because it's important for me to reach other people that are interested in math or really need help in math, okay? We, uh, unfortunately, uh, we in this country and uh, really kind of all over the world, there's a crisis in math education, all right? It's really uh, unfortunate. 
Um, you know, people just are not getting the instruction and education they need. I am trying to rectify that by sharing all my decades of experience. So by you subscribing, it really does help the algorithm reach more people. Okay. And the one thing that I'm definitely trying to prevent is someone trying to, you know, someone considering giving up on math because they don't think they're smart enough. I'm telling you right now, if you've been struggling with math, even for years, okay, if you don't think you're good at math, you can be great in math. But here's what's re uh, required. One, you need great math instruction, comprehensive. You need a lot of demonstrated kind of problems, okay? So that's what I try to do. But two, there's no shortcuts, okay? You have to put in the time and the effort. But those two combinations, if you have uh, that work ethic, okay, plus great instruction and plus time, you are going to be successful, okay? So don't give up. By the way, if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so thanks for listening to my little pitch here. Let's go ahead and finish up this problem. Okay, so here is our proportion. We got 1 over 8 is equal to x over 288. Uh, so you can see I'm going to use the cross product to solve for x. All right, so pretty straightforward algebra here. So 1 times 288 is uh, 288. x times 8 is 8x. And to solve for x, very simple. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 8. So x will be equal to 288 divided by 8, which is 36. Uh, now 36 what? 36 RPMs. So let's go back to our picture here and make sure we understand visually what's going on, uh, kind of going on here, right? So uh, we have the gear ratio 1 to 8. If this small gear turns 288 times, this big gear will turn 36 times, right? That is the answer, 36 RPMs. And of course, if we compare 36 to 288 uh, right here, okay, we reduce this fraction, we get 1 to 8. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Now, I know the nomenclature, gear ratios and whatnot, that could be a little bit confusing. But uh, the whole point of this problem is that when you understand or when you see the word ratio, okay, uh, particularly in any kind of math problem, uh, you have to just, you know, light bulb needs to go on and be like, oh, maybe I need to be thinking about proportions. And that's exactly what you need to be thinking about. Uh, ratio, rates, and proportion problems are everywhere in mathematics. Now, if you need um, additional help with proportions, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, check out my algebra courses. I'll leave links to those in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that uh, can help you out with this stuff as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.